wholesome stories. She had me when she was 14. And I, 24M, was given up for adoption. My parents told me about her growing up. I still have the letter she wrote me that she asked if they could give it to me if they wanted. It's crazy reading it sometimes and knowing it was a literal child who wrote it saying she's sorry she couldn't be my mommy but she hopes I'm happy. She was open to having contact but we moved for my dad's job when I was 11 and then it seemed impossible to find her. But luckily I did. She's working at this small restaurant and I keep going but she doesn't know it's me. We talk sometimes. And she seems like a nice lady. Sometime when she says something like, do you want a refill, honey, or uses another term like that I wanna tell her. It why it makes me nervous. We talk sometimes and she seems really genuine. If it's not super busy she's more open to talking about random stuff. I literally drive two hours to come eat at this place just to see her. And it's like she knows me already because I'm there once or two times a week for the past three months so she always says hi with a big smile. But man if only she knew update, well. I did it I told her. And yeah it was pretty heavy. My heart was even beating fast. I kept trying to think how to tell her. Many of the comments on my last post here mentioned writing her a letter just how she wrote a letter for me. Originally that was the plan but for me it felt like I needed to say it. Oh, really quick I wanna say thanks to everyone for their love and support. Mostly to all the birth parents out there who shared their stories with me. That's what really helped push me to have the courage to confront her. It meant so much so thanks. Everything happened day before yesterday btw. I did wait for her to be done with her shift and that was when they were closing the restaurant already. And waited in the parking lot. We said hi when she saw me first but then I told her there was something serious that she needed to know. First told her sorry for keeping it from her this long. She didn't react until I actually pulled out her letter. And she started bawling from there. Like screaming and crying at the same time, and didn't even have to finish the whole I'm your son speech. She just saw it and knew. It was crazy. Next thing I know she's hugging me instantly but then she pulled back and asked if it's okay to hug me. OFC it is and we're just there hugging and crying in the parking lot. It hit her hard though. Her legs gave out for a second so I had to actually hold her up while she's still hugging me for a min. What really got me was her saying to me look how big you got. Also hearing her cry made me cry too. She went back to open the restaurant up, she wouldn't take no for an answer, we had coffee, ate a slice of their pie inside and talked. So many stuff we talked about. She told me the second time I came to the restaurant she got a feeling but for her it was hard believe it was me. So that feeling she had was pushed way down. Because she told me for years after I was adopted she saw kids that would be my age and used to think they were me. Then she would be crying in public. It fucked with her mind a lot and made her depressed so she didn't want to do the same when she saw me, getting her hopes up like that. She says I look so much like my biological dad when he was younger though. We talked about him too. They stayed in contact with each other in case I ever reached out to one of them so it would be easier to contact the other. I didn't have hope about finding my biological dad since he was never mentioned so I'm glad they both planned for this future scenario. She told me about how they wanted to keep me. Especially my biological dad, he didn't want me to be adopted. But he knew they had to because they were just kids. It took him a long time to get past it after I was born she told me. That's why he didn't leave anything because he didn't want to believe he might not see me again. We talked for hours. Till almost 2 in the morning, they closed at 11. She just wanted to know everything about me but her main thing was, am I happy? Were my parents good to me? Did I have a happy childhood? And I did. I told her thank you for helping to give me this life. We both cried again. She cried the most. Everything was very emotional for her. Sometimes she would look really happy but then get sad again. After my 18th birthday she was hoping I would find her that's why she stayed in the same city. But since I didn't she always thought maybe I resented her, wasn't told I'm adopted, or maybe had decided it was better not to have her around. It made me feel bad for not telling her sooner. She told me it's not my fault and I did right going at my own pace. Honestly she's so sweet. The way she kept looking at me with the biggest smile, it made me emotional sometimes. Makes you think how can someone who's been a total stranger you are whole life look at you with so much love. It's wild. We learned so much about each other. She asked me if we could have dinner soon to keep talking. And if at some point in the future if I'm interested come over to her house so I can meet her husband. That all sounded really great. We exchanged numbers. 
After I left she sent a text telling me thank you for giving her this gift that she didn't know if it would ever come. My girlfriend came over and she hugged me while I cried. I wasn't sad by the way these were happy tears. Everything went better than I expected. There was still emotionally heavy stuff but I'm still glad that we got to open up to each other. Update. Met my biological dad for the first time ever and I'm very happy about it. Lots of you asked to let you know how it goes meeting my biological dad and to say it was emotional, is an understatement. I've been feeling so many things since this all happened. We met a few days ago. Was originally supposed to be almost two weeks ago but shit kept coming up. Work and then I got sick, not COVID, four days. But we made it happen. TBH this was more nervous for me because I didn't know anything about him. With my bio mom it was different because I watched her from far and got to know her a little before it came out. I asked my bio mom if she could be there too just because she knows him better so it was the two of us waiting for him at this park. He was already crying before we even got to him. This guy is strong too so he pulled me in for the biggest bear hug and crying he told me he wants me to know that they loved me so much and he loves me. I lost count how many times he'd come back in for one more hug. This definitely got to him. And he kept saying thank you God a few times. Looking at my face. The feelings man, the feelings. We had so many of them. Hearing him tell me how much they love me even back then. It meant so much for me to hear that in NGL that had me holding him tight too. I'm sure to everyone at the park it was weird seeing three crying people lol. My bio dad said he cried so many times just driving over here he didn't think he had any more tears until he saw us. When we were all sitting down it hit me that my bio mom was not lying when she said we look alike obviously he's older but still holy shit the similarities. He brought gifts too which was a surprise. It was really nice he told me I don't have to keep them if I don't want it but he felt weird not coming with anything and he's wanted to give this to me for a long time. One was a teddy bear holding a picture frame of him at the hospital holding me, he was 15 years old, it's still crazy to realize that. And then the other thing was a journal. The journal thing was stuff he said he started writing to me years after I was adopted. He was in therapy and that that helped him to cope thinking he would give them to me one day. His way of still feeling connected to me. I haven't read everything yet but some of the pages were his thoughts and like if he's talking to me. How he felt when they found out she was pregnant, then the adoption, everything going on in his mind when he first got to hold me as a baby. I didn't even know he was at the hospital too. It was not what I was expecting. It really got me. I read some more of what he wrote last night that really got me crying. I'm sad to think how much this affected them emotionally for years. Also think it's pretty sweet he wanted to write this for me. We talked about his own life which was pretty hard. His struggles with home life and the feelings he had about giving me up. Then he wanted to know everything about me. Basically with the same questions my bio mom had. I made sure they knew they made the right decision. Because my life was pretty great. He looked like he wanted to cry when he knew that because that's all they hoped for and it was something he always wondered about for years. My bio mom left a bit after we were more comfortable so we could talk more in private once it didn't feel too awkward between us. From there he told me stories about how he met my bio mom. Sometimes he'd point out stuff he noticed about me that reminds him of her or me and him having similar likes. Example, I love eating mangoes. I can eat them all day and that's what I bought when we bought snacks at the park. He told me my bio mom was obsessed with mangoes 7 before she got pregnant, while pregnant she craved it even more. Just cool info to know even if it's random stuff lol. It's still stuff we have in common and we both have lots. Both like hiking, playing pool, he was a swimmer in college and I was on a swim team in high school, both love rock music. Especially 90s. My bio dad was really open about sharing everything. Like he really was getting ready for this meeting. He hoped it would happen and he prayed every day to see me again because he had so many things he wanted to tell me. Overall really good first meeting. I'm glad how it went. He's open to the idea of meeting my parents. After I told them about all this because they definitely want to meet my bio parents again if I'm comfortable with that, obviously if my bio parents are too. Let's see when that happens. Ick how it's gonna feel for me. They've met each other before I was even born but I never had them at the same place so that'll be interesting lol. Me and my parents met up yesterday to have breakfast so I could tell them everything. My mom was so happy how it went. She actually cried too while I was telling them about both their reactions. My dad was proud because he knew how hard it was the months after finding my bio mom and not really wanting to make contact yet. 
I'm really happy to have their support because it's hard not to feel guilty about wanting to know more my bio parents. They gave me a really good life so for a while it's felt like maybe to them I'm showing them that wasn't good enough for me and I'd rather have my bio parents. But they told me many times they want me to do this for me and the know how much I love them. And I really do. Finding them and meeting them was hard. But it was so worth it to me. And seeing their reactions made it feel even more worth it. Still can't believe it sometimes. I'm just realizing this has turned into a long post, my bad haha. Writing this has been therapeutic to be honest. Kind of thinking back to everything that's happened. Feeling really grateful. Again wanna say thank you to everyone who has been on this journey with me. Everyone who sent me their own stories, their love, their encouragement. You guys have beautiful hearts and I'm happy I had somewhere to talk about all this and receive so much love back. Just wanna say to all the adopted kids out there, I wish you guys luck and that you find what you're looking for. It's not easy at all. I feel fortunate that things didn't go badly or that my bio parents aren't bad people. And to all the birth parents out there who made this sacrifice, thank you it's because of you there are kids out there like me who got to have a great life with loving parent story too. My bio parents put me, 15m, up for adoption when I was born so I was always in foster homes until I was 12. I had a teacher Janice, 33f, who was my homeroom teacher. Janice found out about me being a foster kid and how I wished I had a family. Janice had also been a foster kid growing up and so long story short she then became my foster mom and adopted me. Janice is the best mom I could have ever asked for. She has been so unbelievably kind and loving to me and I absolutely adore her. The problem is that I don't call her mom, I just call her Janice. I want to start calling her mom but have no idea how to without making it awkward. Please help me internet strangers. Update, so. Was not expecting this big of a response. Thank all of you for responding and some of the ideas made me really tear up. Anyways this morning I went to Janice and I said, good morning mom, she just looked at me and started crying then came over and hugged me and kissed my forehead. I hugged her back and she said I could call her whatever made me comfortable and that she loves me more than anything. I just replied with, I love you mom. So yeah hope this update makes someone's day because it certainly made mine. Have a great day. Also made a typo I'm 15 not 16 lol final story about a caring co-worker who wants to give a gift. My co-worker recently lost his car, don't know the details, probably broke down or something. He had to cancel his own wedding for his son's funeral last weekend. He's in a really shitty spot. I don't think this guy is one of those, makes someone feel sorry in order to take advantage of them, types so. I was already kinda half-ass looking around at newer cars, waiting for a deal for a few months now but not needing one ASAP. When I heard this guy was Ubering to and from work every day I was like, holy shit I'll just go ahead and pull the trigger on a new to me car and give him my old car. I have decided I'm going to do it but I have no idea how to do it. I want to preserve his dignity so I'm not going to make a big show of it, in fact, I really don't like the fact that our coworkers will figure it out when they see him driving my car. I don't feel like I'm doing it for self-aggrandizement, everything just happened to line up to where I can really help this guy. I'd have donated it to NPR because I wouldn't get much in trade and don't want to hassle with selling. How should I approach this? What is the most graceful way to give this to him, and refuse payment if he offers it, and not let it be weird? I mean, I know I can only control my side of things but if there are some things I can say or do that would make it easier I'd appreciate some insight. In my mind, I was thinking of inviting him into an empty office and just being like look dude. I want you to have this. But then. What? What if I offend him? What if he refuses to take it and continues to Uber into work? What if he gets weird afterwards? My boyfriend said I should offer to sell it to him for a super low price so it doesn't feel like charity, but I feel kinda tacky being like, hey I know you have all this shit going on but if you give me 500 bucks I'll give you my car? Nah no, that won't work for me. Maybe I could offer to sell but be super insistent that I will never ask him when he will pay me and he can get it back to me whenever he wants, 5 bucks at a time if he needs to but really I am not trying to make money off this. I just want to help my colleague. He's kind, warm, and hardworking and he's dealing with a bunch of shit. A big steaming shit pile. I can't sit here knowing I can help him and just shake him down or do nothing. How do I even remotely handle this, update added as an edit. So, I showed up right as he was walking across the lot to his truck to leave for the week. I ran up and was like, hey. How you holding up? He sighed heavily and said, I am getting through it because I must get through it. 
I asked, have you come to a solution for your car problem? And he sighed again and said, yes, the solution is that I must have one and can't afford another. We were about 20 yards away from employee parking and could see both my cars so I said, well, this weekend I bought that car, point at new car, and so now I would like you to have that one, point at old car. He was absolutely speechless, so I kinda started talking fast and was like, I couldn't find the title, it's in my closet somewhere, but I have all the necessary paperwork you need to bring to the Iowa DOT to transfer it into your name. I'll pay for a replacement title if I can't find it, and it's overdue for an oil change so I'll get that done this week while you're out too. I'll leave the keys on my desk so you have them if you get back after I leave on Friday. I attempt to look in his eyes but his mask has fogged his glasses. I continue. Yeah, they only offered me $98 for the car and I didn't think it was worth it and I didn't really want to hassle with selling it online. Also I don't have space at home to keep it, so I thought to myself, why not let have it. So here we are. He has begun shaking. It's 15 degrees so I am getting pretty cold at this point and I start hopping a little. So, would you take my car please? I ask, by way of concluding the offer and requesting some kind of feedback. Immediately, he grabbed me around the shoulders and pulled me in for a long, strong hug. He is openly weeping into my hair now. He is saying something but my scarf is muffling his words, but I let him hang on until he decides to pull back. Finally he removed his glasses, and he looked me in the eyes and said, you have changed my life with this gift. I cannot describe what you have given me. So of course I started crying and we hugged again. Then, he said I must be freezing and I am to go into the office immediately, so I did. He sat out in his truck for a while before finally leaving for the week, and I feel content that he did not insist on haggling over money. Perhaps if he decides later to bring it up, I will entertain what he has to say, but for now I am well satisfied with how this turned out. Now I just have to find that damn title. I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart to each and every one of you who read this and took the time to reply. As it turns out, I was totally overthinking how this was going to go. Thank you for joining me today. Don't forget to connect with each other in the comments below. Until next time, be kind, be curious, and I'll catch you in the next video. Corner Stories signing off.